Welcome to a quest for metal. Today we are reviewing the latest Grind Beloyal's Key album, which just released out of the blue. Didn't even know it came out until someone commented it on my top albums of April video, and I was like, a new Grand Beloyal's Key? You're having a laugh, right? It's been like 10 years since the last one, but no, they weren't having a laugh. It's actually out, and you can listen to it on YouTube. Kohanic Charmers is the name, and we're gonna do a review of it right here now. We're going to go through each song, tell you what I thought of the song, was good. I'm not going to say it was bad because all the songs are pretty good. It's Grand Blast Key. You know what you're getting? It's riff heavy, it's juicy, and it's some crazy ass screams. It's all gravy. And of course, if you've listened to the album, let me know what you thought of it down below. Which song's your favourite and what album's your favourite? I might do a ranking as well um, because I love pretty much all the material. So... Let's get in with it and start with the very first song. So starting off we have Prayer Shawl of the Firstborn Donkey and it just goes straight away into that just intensity you come to expect from Grand Belial's Key. But then after like the first 10 seconds it then hits you with just that riff. Uh, and you know they are riff masters. They Every song just has a riff that just gets stuck in your head. And this is no different because it goes from that intensity to this kind of like dirgy, dark, kind of deep sound where it's like a ding, 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 you just feel like you're just getting lower and lower into the ground while listening to it. Great way to kick off an album, instantly sets the mood and sets the album up. Amazing opener. It has those pain screams like you come to expect, reminding me of Bilbo in Fellowship of the Ring, when he turns from just normal into just, ah, and he just screams it like a jump scare, basically. It's like an evil Bilbo jump scare, and the, vo the vocals are so good. And there's like these worried shouts as well, not just the screams, but there's these kind of like, ah, oh, worried shouts within, which just adds flavor to the music as well. So starting off strong, first song is amazing. Next up we have Serpent Bibliomancy. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And this one, it starts off with a bleh. And whenever you start off with a bleh, it's, it's good. You know, it's good. It's... Kind of like mixture of like death metal with black metal that no other, no other black metal band really can seem to do properly. Because you have like the um, Belphegors and the Behemoths and stuff in that kind of more melodic kind of style, theatrical side. But then you have something like this, which is just pure riffy and death and just disgusting. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, starting off with a bleh, this is, is a 10 out of 10 in my books. And it has, again... The hypnotic riff throughout is just, well, it's, it's hypnotic. That's the word for it. It is hypnotic. Keeps you in your seat, keeps you entranced within the music, and it just carries on throughout the whole song, and it ends, and it ends with a blare as well. You know, you start with a blare, you end with a blare. Song is pretty heavy as well, so, yeah, another great song on the album. Now, the first song's a little bit different. Crudge drips from the shofar. I probably said that wrong. Where, the f Where is it? Crud drips from the shofar. Okay, I did say it right. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> some of these song titles is crazy. It's like Inquisition with all the long ass song titles. This one's very different. There's a lot of doomy elements in this. Like an acoustic part in the middle, a very serene kind of break from the intensity, which I really, really enjoy in this song. And the doomy, the doomy part has like a breakdown into that doom section, and it goes even lower than the first song does, because that first song has that kind of, not really a doomy riff, but just a really low riff. But this one just goes full on like atmospheric doom on you. But yeah, in the middle, it then crosses into like this really beautiful acoustic passage, which just, I don't know, it's just beautiful. And then the end has these cool, like, chants as well. There's, like, chanting in it near the end of the song, which, again, really adds to the um, adds to the layers of this song. Kind of like Shrek's Onion. It's got lots of layers. Probably one of my favourite songs in the album. Uh, not my absolute favourite, but one of them. And I just think it just adds depth to the album. So, yeah, really enjoyed this song as well. Next up, we have The Door is Marked with Sheep's Blood. The Prince of Egypt intensifies... This song is evil. This song is very heavy as well. It reminds me of like Immolation. If anything was like death metal on this album, it's this song. Very heavy, very fast, very just Immolation like to me. For m in my ears, it's Immolation like. It has those crazy golem streaks on this album. Not quite the Bilbo shrieks, but the golem shrieks. 
Like, he's gone from being semi-hobbit into full-on just golem-like creature on this with that weird noises he makes, and it's just, it's beautiful. It's it's a work of art. And then the guitar outro, this kind of, like, solo-esque outro that they do, it just brings the song full circle. This is probably the heaviest song on the album, and it's just, yeah, it, it's a it's a fun song. Next up, we have Fiscus Judicus, which reminds me of, say, like, Cradle of Filth, and that's probably going to get a lot of shit, but this video's going to get a lot of shit anyway, so it reminds me of Cradle of Filth. Really does like the latest album by Cradle of Filth or any of the later ones where they have this kind of catchy chorus, but they do it in a way which just works with music and it only, they only do it like maybe once or twice within the song, if that. But it stands with me because it's such a fun part of the song. I like that they can have fun with the music. It's not just evil all the way through, crazy all the way through. They have these fun little catchy sections like that chorus, but it's not just that the song has depth. After like the catch chorus, it has like this soulful melody, and starting off the song, it hits you right away. It goes straight, full gear, pounds your face into dust. Then the catch chorus, then the soulful melodies. Then it has a crazy solo. Like, this has a solo in it, which is mind melting. And then with the crazy shrieks again. This is probably the most fun song on the album. Probably my favorite song on the album. Actually, no, it is my favorite song on the album. It has everything you could want. It's fun sing along parts for the kids. <laughs> Crazy shrieks. Doomy parts. A solo. Yeah, best song on the album. Love it. Gonna be in my end of the year list for songs, I think. Love this song. Now it's time for a more Anal Nafrax sounding song. Two forks and a muttering diviner. Or Diviner, I don't, don't know how to say that, but this is such an insane song. This is probably the fastest song in the album. From that kind of all over the place song, which I enjoyed, to a, just a straight, you could say almost thrashy, black thrash kind of pounder of a song. It, oh, it goes full force. It goes full force. And then you have the crazy, like, I am that I am in the background, which just adds to the intensity. Because his vocals just keep getting more and more just pained as the song is progressing and the instrument's going faster and faster. It really does remind me of an Al Nafrak song. I love it for that. Not my favourite, I still prefer you know the fun song before that, but if you like intensity, this has you covered. Then we have like this instrumental, which is fine, it's the weakest on the album, of course it is, it's an instrumental. I, I think, <sighs> I know, instrumentals are kind of like the bane of my existence. If it's like a long one, like a 10 minute one, sure, that... That's fine, but not not like a three minute one. They should have just added it to one of the other songs. You know, they should have just added it to one of the other songs and it would have been better in my opinion. But it's fine for what it is. It's an instrumental, you know, it's peaceful, it's serene, it's it's nice, but it's just an instrumental. So what can I say? Next on to the final song, which such such a moody anthemic final song. Like, it's such a way to close an album as well. It feels like it's all building up to this one song and the one song just explodes and it's just confetti of madness. And that's what this last song is. It even has like slow, melodic, like swayy parts. And that's not really a, a word, but that's what I'm going to say. Swayy. It's very swayy. Heavy riffs, amazing solos, great send off, great way to close off an amazing album. So, Kohenic Charmers, what am I going to give it out of 10? I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. It's, it's amazing. Um, they don't really have any bad albums, and this one stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best that they have. It isn't my favourite, because admittedly I've only heard it, you know, like ten times since it's been out. But, you know, it could, could rise to be my favourite, but uh, I might do a video on ranking the albums and see where this lands on that. But that'll be, you know, in the future, because I need more time to digest. But for now, for this review, 9 out of 10... Love this album, you know, think what you want about anything else, but this album is great to the ears, really enjoyed it. So, let me know, did you know this album was even out? How would you rate it? Let me know down below, and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.